Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, I'm Mike Robles. This is Totally Uncensored. And today I am delighted to have a guest who I've been dying to get on, the one and only Edo Rodriguez. What's hey, up? Yeah. How Hi. are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good, good, good. I know all your fans recognize you. You know, you've done so much stuff. You've done, let's see, uh, Entre Nos, right? You've been on the Young Turks Network, a couple of comedy specials on Netflix. And what everybody knows also is Tiffany Haddish's Day Ready. Yeah. So you, 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 you've been busy, and there's a lot I want to talk to you about, so I'm going to jump in, if you don't mind. Let's just jump in, because there's a lot right here I want to talk to you about. Let's do it. I want to ask you, first of all, I heard that you got a, uh, a Cuban woman fired for calling black people monkeys. Is that true? <laughs> well, I don't know if I got her fired, but I did point out the video. I'm from Miami. Right. And um, I didn't know the lady was Cuban when I posted the video. I just thought the video was ridiculous. I know that, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of tension sometimes between Puerto Ricans and Cubans in Miami. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they call us boniatos. They make fun of us. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you want to hear. I don't mean to talk. I heard, when I was the same thing. I'm Boricua. You know, I was in Miami. And a Cuban dude says to me, he goes, do you know why Cubans came to this country? I don't know why he goes to teach Puerto Ricans how to read. <laughs> so I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I know. You know. But I had a good comeback for him. My comeback was, well, I'll admit, right, that Puerto Ricans, you don't know how to read, but you have to admit to me that Cubans talk a lot of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Any uh, conversation, man. That's funny. And in, in Spanish, it's hilarious. <laughs> I mean, but did, did, I mean, so did, so did you get her fired? I mean, I don't know if I got her fired. I know that a lot of people were trying to get the attention of the people that she worked for because she worked in a social services office where she was providing, um, you know, services to people in in a community that's predominantly black. And so I was like, "There's no way she's going to give anybody fair service if that's the way she thinks." You know, if that's her perception of people. <laughs> But my mom also lives in that community because my mom is in Liberty City in Miami. So I was like, I don't want my mom going to a place with a person like that. So she did get fired after the video. I think the video kind of went viral. Yeah, um, what, what was the video about? I mean, was she on the street calling black people monkeys? I mean, what, 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 what? She was at work. That's why it was a problem because she was at her job in her break room talking about how she hated black people. But she worked in oh. a providing services for black people. Wow, she used the word monkey. Do you think monkey though is like racist, that word monkey? Like if I were to say, you know, the word monkey, I mean, people right away get tense, right? You notice that? Yeah, it's, it's you know what, it's so funny that even in Spanish, right? Mm -hmm. The Latinos that are darker, the, we've allowed that to become something that, that identifies with blackness and we shouldn't because mm -hmm. a monkey is a monkey. But when she was saying monkey, she was calling black people monkeys. <laughs> that was not that, that was not her talking right. about monkeys. She was right. saying she couldn't stand. She was saying she hated them. Like right. it was just, oh, yeah. I, why are you there? Why are you there? You got you're in the neighborhood. You why are right. you there? go on somewhere else? Right, right, right. You know, because it just seems today. You know, we live in a society. You know, where even just a certain word gets people tense. You know. Back and forth, you know, if, if this was like, you know, maybe the 80s, 90s, you said monkey, monkey's a monkey. Nobody thinks twice. But you say yeah. monkey today and people go, you know, they're already thinking, is this a racist thing going on? I mean, how did, how did we get there? I mean, years and years and years of people calling black people monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, it's not, it's not out of nowhere. It's just that that was a... <laughs> Oh, oh racist white people saying, you know, calling us monkeys too, and right, yeah, yeah. Dominicans monkeys and black Puerto Ricans monkeys. And so no, here no. we are. Well, you've done a lot of, like I read your credits, uh, and, and I left out, by the way, it's fruit serum, which is awesome because you bring it to them raw. It's not cherry coated, you know, toma, there you go. You, yeah, give them, you, give, you give them a dose of that stuff. And so that's that's very successful. All these credits, the, the comedy specials, Tiffany Haddish. So tell me, like, out of the Bronx, you know, from the Bronx to Hollywood, how, tell me some of your struggles. How does a Bronx girl from, you know, the Bronx go to Hollywood? The funny know? thing is that when I was in the Bronx, I got kidnapped and they took me to Miami. And so oh. I got kidnapped by my grandmother. 
And I grew up, you know, I grew up in Miami, you know, back and forth. But uh, how does somebody get from the Bronx to Hollywood uh, struggle? It was a lot of struggle. It was a lot of a hardship. It was a decision that I made when I left Miami that I wanted to come to Hollywood to uh, make movies. I wanted to write movies, start being them, acting them, but I wanted to write and produce them. And um, I was like, there's no way it's going to happen in Miami. So I got to move. And I came here and um, I, everything for me started with writing, everything. I, I, all performance that I've ever done has always started with writing for me. Since I was in high school, I used to write the plays that I was in. I've always written everything because I know that we have to create our own stuff mm -hmm. um, to tell our stories because when they tell our stories, they get them wrong, right? You know, right. Exactly. Every time you see Puerto Ricans on TV, they're either, you know, they're criminals or they're bad mothers or they're on drugs or, you know, they, they got, they're violent. Right, right. So I was like, nah, that's, that's not the world that I know. Like the Puerto Ricans that I know, you know, all over my world that yeah we got criminals and drug addicts we also got lawyers and judges and doctors right. to see those on tv so i came here and i said i'm gonna do it um and along the way there was a lot of stuff that happened you know being broke and working in a city that the cost of living is so high and it's not designed for people to be here who mm -hmm. don't have a lot of money um, I had to work a lot of jobs, you know, I, I had to make a lot of sacrifices and I'm still doing it because, you know, I, I'm still just barely making it like everybody else. Right. Yeah. You know, so you, a lot of credit yeah. and not have credit, you know? Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's a tough city. LA is very expensive, mm -hmm. especially like I know you had mentioned you really when you started the comedy career and everything and uh, even to now where you're at, that you were never embraced by the Latino community. Right, yeah. that it was, you know, I guess people like Tiffany Haddish and I guess uh, Kevin Hart, who really threw you, like you said, they threw you a rope, yeah. you know, and you pretty much questioned, you know, why is it that Latinos can't throw each other, why can't they, throw, why can't we throw each other a rope? You know, I, we, I've been thinking about that a lot, especially today after I saw the Emmy nominations and there were no Latinos that were nominated for acting. Right. But they start thinking about it. You can't just blame, you know, the fact that they're not getting nominated, but they're not getting nominated because they're not, they don't have the shows, they don't have the roles, you know. Okay. Like, and when you think about um the the group, the way that Latinos are grouped, because people they say the Latino market and the Latino group, there is no Latino market. There's there's mm -hmm. we're so broken up into different groups where the Argentinians and the Bolivians and the Puerto Ricans and the Dominicans, we don't have any solidarity. And so when you think about Latinos, when they get famous and they become successful, they don't like throwing the rope back to other Latinos. They feel yeah. by them because they feel like there's only one room at the top. Like when you think about the biggest Latinos in Hollywood, Mm -hmm. Think about the stars that they created because, like, Kevin Hart helped Tiffany Haddish along mm -hmm. the way, and Chris Rock, you know, helped Leslie Jones, right. and Ed Murphy helped Chris Rock and mm -hmm. Dave Chappelle. Right. There, there's always been this progression of them making sure that their legacies continue through the stars of tomorrow. Of course, of course. Latinos don't do that because it's always this, you're all, you know, it's like. George Lopez is an older man. He shouldn't be competing with the tw the twenty year old comedian, right? You know what I mean? Like it shouldn't. We shouldn't feel like. You're right. You're right. You know he shouldn't feel in any way. And I'm not saying that he does because I don't know what he is or, or isn't threatened by. But there's no reason why he shouldn't be, because it, he's got a whole different place in his career. And yeah, so you're right. that when you look at all, all of it, like our writers' rooms, we don't have Latinos in the writers' rooms. We don't have Latino showrunners. So how are we going to get Emmys when we don't even have control over telling our own stories? You're right. And, you know, it's so right on because, and, and I hate to admit it, you know, you are right. And it, and it also bothers me because when I did the Que Local show, right, mm -hmm. I did it to create a platform to showcase Latino comedy because there wasn't, you know, and it became popular and blah, blah, blah. But it wasn't about me. It wasn't about ego. With that platform, I was throwing everybody a rope. Yeah. You know, as far as, you know, doing the comedy. So what happens is that show's popular and, you know, and, and they'll admit it, but it launched the careers of uh, Gabriel Iglesias 
it launched the careers. I should say relaunched the career of George Lopez. I'm going to tell you the whole backstory, but it did relaunch the, uh, the, the careers of both uh, Gabriel and George. And you know what? I'm still waiting for that rope. You know what's funny? Just, just, so, just so you know, I, I haven't been thrown a rope yet. <laughs> well, give me some time, though. Give me some time. I'm working on it. <laughs> but, uh, the funny thing is that when that show is, you know, it launched people's careers because people still talk about it. They still use the, use it as credits. Mm -hmm. we say that you know, you know, this person from Que Loco. So right. that was something that was that that cannot be erased. No, no, and I'm so happy to do that. And while I'm in the process of writing a book now, because I don't want it to be where it's forgotten, you know, because no one's talking about it, so I'm going to have to do it, you know? But yeah. I posted a picture today on Instagram, an old picture, you know, going back 20 years. The Que Loco saw with Gabriel Iglesias standing in front of the, the, the Majestic Theater in San Antonio, right? And I got a couple of comments today. That was the first show that me, my mother, my grandmother sat around the TV and watched every Sunday. That's 20 years ago. You know, so, so yeah, it, it does have its impact. But the point I was trying to make, I don't want to, you know, like I'm tooting my horn was, you're right. It's like Latinos, we don't help each other, you know? No, no. Some, it, some do, but but for the most part. Of course, comedy, yeah. I, I, I'll say Paul Rodriguez is probably the only one. Oh, yeah. Paul Rodriguez, is, he's been, he's had my back. Paul Rodriguez has been there for us. But uh, this other stuff, like you said, you know, you get on top and all of a sudden there's no room. I mean, and you said the legacy, you know, who's the next legacy? Who's that going to be? We don't yeah. have one. We don't pass it on, you know? No, it's... it's you you got to do something. You have the platform. I'm you have the that. voice, Ada Rodriguez. If anyone can do it, you can do it. I'm, I'm you. giving you that response, that burden, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to put it on your feet. You handle it for me. I receive I that. I'm working on it, though. I honestly am working on it because I think it's important to tell our stories, all of our stories, not just the same stories and you know like they all everything is always the mexican story and even when they tell the mexican stories they don't do service to mexicans because they always it's either the migrant worker that's getting raped by the white man or mm -hmm. the, the mexican person that owns a business that's the white man is trying to take it from them and the rooster that wakes them up in the morning because apparently we don't have alarm clocks <laughs> you know just <laughs> it gets old so we got to create our own you know our own okay. stuff no doubt, no doubt. And then hopefully, you know, hopefully we'll get there. Now, I didn't have anything on my plan. I have everything I want to talk to you right here. I didn't even think about this, but since we're talking about this, movies, what do you think about these romantic movies? For example, like you have uh, J-Lo, right? She does all these romantic movies, right? And it's always that, let's say, uh, they're with a Latino, it don't work out, they wind up with a white guy. And the white guy is the one that saves them. In other words, the subliminal message is, you want success, you want to make it, the white guy will take you there. I mean, I'm talking about, uh, what is it, the one she did about the maid? It was called The Maid, right? And then she did one. The Maid, uh, any movie she made, it's always some, whatever, The Three Amigos. You remember The Three Amigos? No. That beautiful girl, it was like Three Amigos. Her boyfriend was an idiot, a complete buffoon. She left him and then, you know, a white guy, you know. So I'm just thinking, do you think that's good, like for young Latina girls, when they go to a movie and they see these messages, where it's pretty much what I'm getting out of it is like, if you want to make it, the white guy is the way to do it. Of course not. I think that anytime you tell a story about two people and the reason that there's upward mobility is because of the race of the other person, yeah. you know, you're sending a bad message. But, you know, like, the white savior exists in all the movies, like not just the romantic movies and every single thing is white people saving, even the slave movies. It's like the white man is the one that saved these people, right? So I just think that's the problem in our storytelling. That's why we got to tell our own stories because if we don't, when they tell our stories, they don't tell the truth. They don't tell the stories. Well, that's another thing I'm going to put on you, okay? The next movies, they have to have two starring roles of Latinos and I want to see a kissing scene. I haven't seen two, you know, Latinos having a romantic kissing scene. I haven't seen that. I, 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 that that's the next thing I want to lay on your feet, if you don't mind. Is that okay? I'm working on it right now. I'm working on a movie right now that I'm writing, and so and it is a uh, starring uh, all Latino cast, actually. Thank you, thank you, thank you. About time. Thank you very much. <laughs> now going back to Tiffany Haddish, right? 
mm-hmm. right? And I know, you know, you girls, you know, you, you were tight and everything, and she threw and, and she threw you the rope, right? So in this case, what I want to ask you here is like, as far as Latinos, you think Latino men, you think they have a problem, let's say, with 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 women in general, especially Latino women, like yourself, you're smart, you know, you're beautiful, you can think. Do you fight? You think Latino men you, they're intimidated by you? I don't know. Um, I, w- I don't. I don't know if they would categorize it as being intimidated, but I will tell you that that's probably the the group that hates me the most in comedy. Like it's you know like, men, really. You know men, yes, because I speak the the ones that are machista, the one that are you know that suffer from that toxic masculinity. They don't really, um, really respond to my messages of strength. And the thing is that I grew up, you know, my Puerto Rican grandmother and my mother who raised me were very strong. Like all the Latinas that I know are super strong women. I don't, I, you know, and I know that there are a lot of women who may have fall for the, uh, within the roles of the traditional roles and in, in relationships. But I grew up with, with a grandmother who had a gun, like ella siempre, el bucame yeah. She would send me to go get the gun. Wow. You know, she was one of those ladies. So when, yeah, there, there's a problem with it, with women. And when you saw what happened in Congress with AOC, mm-hmm. there is, you know, I'm going to say it. There's a disrespect for Latina women throughout the world. And it is because the images that you see of Latinas on television and in film and in media is that we're maids. And we are, you know, we are we are victims of abuse, and we right. are subservient. So there's this there's this anti, and, and it's all women of color, and Latin women are looked at as somebody you can say whatever to. You see these Karens telling Latinas go back to your country. That's why when that Latin woman slapped that white lady in the gas station, mm-hmm. and it went viral, it was such a big moment yeah. because. Latinas are usually perceived to putting their heads down and not, you know, and walking away from the drama. So, yeah, I think that there is a problem with women. And unfortunately, Latin men, you know, the the one, there are a lot of Latin men who do like me, but I would say if there was a group that I would be, that I was surprised to know that they didn't like me, it is Latin men because I represent uh, rebellion and, Instead of it being strength, it is perceived to be to being, you know, atrevida. Like right. they, like, like, who does this girl think she is? Like, why is she telling women to do this? And they don't realize that that's sexist behavior, and it's yeah. not your place and stuff, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, see, the, the reason I ask because I know there's probably you know young Latin girls, Latino girls who are experiencing it, and yeah. I want them to hear it from you rather than me, a dude, mm-hmm. you know about. You know what's going on. Reality. This is what we're talking about right here. You're giving us some truth serum right now. Now you see what they said to AOC. You know Donald Trump called her. He told her to go back to her country, and somebody, uh, who else? Somebody called her or whatever that is. They were they didn't yeah, refer to her as a human being. Right. So, and then you saw that that man called her a fucking bitch. That's. Yeah. That is because you're stepping out of place. It's like you're supposed to be humble and be thankful that you come here. Yeah. And, you know, you're not supposed to be using your words to speak out against us. And that right. that, that reigns true from Congress to comedy and everything in between. Right. Well, you know, when you bring truth to people, some of them uncomfortable. Like I heard, again, I heard that uh, white supremacists took over your, your Facebook page. Is that right? Oh, that happened one time. Yeah, they they took over so, my. Parents. So the white supremacists came after you. Yeah, they do. They 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 you know they send me messages and threats and they say really bad things about me. But like, well, I, what did they say? I'm just curious. What like what did they do? They threaten you or what? What did they do? Somebody in uh, on YouTube they said the only place that I belong is on a noose. Um, you know, they'll say things like, uh, when Donald Trump became president, I got a whole bunch of tweets telling me that I was going to go back to my country now. And I was like, you mean go to Commonwealth? That's America. Does that ever worry you? Like, do you ever feel like for your safety in that? Because I'm sure, man, I mean, I could only imagine to Twitter hate when it comes, it comes, you know, and I'm sure on your at symbols, you're like, 
just strolling down? I mean, does that worry you? Does it concern you? Do you care? You know, I um, I, I take a, a certain level of care and concern with myself because I belong to the people who love me and my family. So I'm not reckless, but I don't operate in fear. I always feel like the people who do stuff like that online tend to be cowards because real people who have something to say, you know, they will stand up to you in person. But the other thing is that it, I will have a conversation with anybody that I don't that doesn't agree with me, which is fine because that's where we should be able to do that. But if you hate me because I believe that we deserve the same level of respect and treatment than everybody else, mm -hmm. then you're somebody I don't want to have a conversation with. And right. at some point we got to fight, right? We can't just right. allow people to just treat us like nothing and just take it because what do, what's the alternative? Just being here and walking around, letting somebody mm -hmm. just, you know treat mm -hmm. us. Like have you have you noticed when it comes to races and these white supremacists that they have bad grammar? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've noticed that. They should have like, I thought of this, they should have like an autocorrect, right, for races that they, you know what I'm saying? When they, they yeah. just correct their words. They can what get their messages out correctly. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. What I'd like to do with you here is play now uh, a little truth serum with okay. Nader Rodriguez, okay? okay. Well, now, right now, you're, this is you, Truth Serum. So the first topic here is Black Lives versus All Lives Matter. Do you think it's racist to say All Lives Matter? Yes. It is, why? I think it is racist to say All Lives Matter, Willie Colon, because the thing is that when you're saying All Lives Matter, you are erasing the fact that black people are fighting for their humanity in this moment. And the fact that, you know, black and brown people, because we don't get report, our murders don't get reported as much as black people in America, because if they start reporting the Latinos who are getting killed like that, we'll have a complete revolt in this country because then everybody's going to be like, wait a minute now. Mm -hmm. But when you, when, you know, the thing is, People have done all the analogies and you see these white people saying all lives matter. When you go buy dogs from the shelter, they're always telling you to go buy dogs for the shelter, right? Go right. buy the dog from the shelter. Go buy the dog. What about every time you show up at the shelter that you pick up that dog from the shelter and a, a, a breeder stops by and says, all dogs matter. Like, why are you buying that dog? You know, that's yeah, just, right, right. you know what I mean? It's just, right, right. you you were here. It, it, first of all, it's, it's undeniable. You can look mm -hmm. on line you can look outside your window and you can see the disproportionate treatment of people of color poorly by law enforcement right. in this country. it is right. not a figment of our imagination right. so when you when you see that and you're saying please let us live you know uh jackie uh what's her name sandy guidado a puerto rican lady who was killed in her sleep who was a correctional officer in new york that's a puerto rican afro latina woman right. killed in, murdered in her sleep and when you talk about Andres and when you talk about the young man up north that, that was on his knees and shot five times in the back, mm -hmm. you, you we're not talking, we're saying, please let us live. And so right. you want to erase that with all lives matter. Yeah. So in that case, I, I, I hear you. So when it's a brown person, Latino person, would it be OK to say Latino lives matter or would people get upset with that? No, we, we say brown lives matter all brown the time. Lives, right? Yeah, absolutely. Because the that there, I mean, my friend uh, Benjamin Crump, who's the attorney that's representing George Floyd and Breonna Taylor, mm -hmm. he he and I had a conversation, and he reached out to all of those families for me and wow. said, I will, "I will provide you with legal help if you need it." You know, he he's actually representing a Puerto Rican man who was killed in Indiana by wow. a cop as well, um, and his family reached out to me. They called me, so it. it I don't think anybody would be upset about that. I think that the people who are fighting for Black Lives Matter are also mm -hmm. fighting for brown lives as well. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. They continuously try to divide us because I agree. Divide and conquer, you know? And, 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 and the sad thing is, right? It's like they do, they cover for us. But why is it that Latinos, we don't have a voice like that? You know, like a Jesse Jackson, Gloria Al Sharpton, someone that when something happens, They'll be knocking at your door within five minutes. I mean, we don't, we, we don't, we don't, we don't, right? We don't have that. We have some. They just not famous because the the famous people co op the movements, right? Because if right now you sitting down and you create a movement in in Texas. 
to try to help, you know, the immigrants of Texas and you're working for mm -hmm. like whatever. And you start talking about it. And then Eva Longoria talks about it. Everybody just gravitates to Eva Longoria when she's right. only visiting with it while right. you're doing the, the work every day. And we don't uplift the leaders, the Latino right. leaders who are doing the work. The right. other problem is that we have so many, um, you know, we have white Latinos, we have indigenous Latinos, we have black Latinos, mm -hmm. and there's apathy in our group for the white Latinos who don't have, don't, that's not, they don't feel like that's their problem because mm -hmm. they're not indigenous looking and they're not black. So they're like, that's not our issue. We are white. Right. And so we don't have any solidarity. Right. But that's where, to me personally, I think Latino celebrities come in. Why do you think they don't use their, uh, their you know, their platforms like the J Lo's, the Cardi B's, uh, the Lin Manuel Miranda? You know, these guys. I'll be totally honest with you. Like something like Vanessa Guillen, right? Who a soldier, twenty year old girl, sexual harassment, and you can't like say anything like hashtag justice for Vanessa Guillen, right? But then when this Goya boycott happened, within five minutes, Lin Manuel Miranda was leading a boycott for beans. So right. you know, to me, like Goya beans, black beans are more important than you know Vanessa Yang. It just I, I trip out because these are people who who can to chelos, you know, and they don't. And I'm just wondering why. I I, I don't know why because I don't know them. I know Cardi B uses her platform to speak out about a lot of stuff, and she's right. always getting condemned because she was even she was pushing for uh, health care for all. She talks about the climate. Right. 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 Um, then Manuel, I don't know. I've worked with him before. Um, you know, I think that a lot of people didn't know about Vanessa again. I think that she wasn't getting the attention. It was the grassroots movement of right. people who made, who brought that to the national people's attention. Right. Right. But, you know, I think that a lot of these big time celebrities, they, they, they go with what they think is popular and what's right. on brands right. and, you know, I'll put their black boxes up for George Floyd. Right. If you right. look beyond what they're doing, they're probably not doing anything for anybody. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, we got to call them out. We got to mm -hmm. say, if you want our dollars, you want us to buy your album mm -hmm. and watch the TV show and go see your movie. That's right. You can use your platform to create some awareness for all the stuff. That's right. You hear that? Did you hear that? West Side Story is coming out in September. Keep that in mind. You're going to want a lot of Latinos to see the reboot. A West Side That's Story. Right. This is it. And, and the re Spielberg. Steven okay. Spielberg. Then my boy is in the Heights. Which one? Say it again. I'm sorry. So, uh, West Side Story is Steven Spielberg. He's doing the reboot of that. Lin Manuel has In the Heights coming out next year. Right. But I think Lin Manuel, I don't know, wrote some of the music. I'm not sure. But did he write the music for West Side Story? I think he wrote a couple. But see, in this movie, West Side Story Part Two, they get it right. In this part, actual Latinos get to play the parts. Right. You say the other one is like, but anyway, this is some truth zero now. This is what we're doing. This okay? Absolutely. I got another one for you. All right. The Goya boycott. To boycott Goya, not to boycott Goya. Now I know you mentioned that the CEO of Goya, right? You you said he's from Spain, just a white guy that speaks Spanish. He doesn't re represent Hispanics, right? So my question then is, who would you send to the White House to represent Hispanics? So first of all, he, he 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 is Hispanic because Hispanics are people who speak Spanish. He's not Latino. All right, okay, he's not Latino. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have uh, AOC mm -hmm. in the White House speaking up for us, and okay. a lot of people, you know, push back on her because they call her a socialist and a communist and all this right. stuff. Because they they what they do is they they guide the American people through their emotions instead of what's really facts, right? Because America has uh, we are a mixed economy. And so we mm -hmm. do employ socialism in the United States. It only benefits the rich people, the top 1%, because mm -hmm. we have a post office. We have a lot of publicly funded programs that are considered by definition socialism, right? Mm -hmm. And as I learned uh, not that long ago, the reason why we have a five-day work week is based on socialism. So when we, when we uh, have these conversations about leadership, when it comes to Latino, because there are so many different factions and we're so divided, mm -hmm. depending on our groups, our traumas mm -hmm. are different. Like the Dominican right. Republic is a third world country, whereas Puerto Rico is a commonwealth and Cuba is a communist country. So those three countries alone have right. totally different 
uh, realities and you know social, political, economic issues that differ so much from just one another. Mm -hmm. When you talk about things like when AOC talks about uh, Medicare for all, it mm -hmm. triggers the Cubans and the people from Venezuela because they identify that with being communist. Right, right, right. The problem is, is that we don't fundamentally, if you are educated and you have the information and you really study, then you'll understand that that is not communism. What right. that is, it works in Canada and Canada every day, and it works in Sweden and it works throughout Europe. Right. But you no, know, because people don't have basic information and education, they're triggered by emotion. Right, right. How do we find a leader that's going to represent the entire, the common interest of Latinos mm. having to find someone where we can, that we need to collectively sit down and talk about the issues that affect us all? Because mm. at the end of the day, um, if we don't get it together, we're not going to have any representation, right? right? right. So I, when I interviewed Bernie Sanders, I asked him um, from based on, on his, pla his platform and the people that he talked to, what was the number one concern for Latinos? And I thought it was immigration. And mm -hmm. he said, no, it was health care. And, it, and, I, and it missed, I missed it because a lot of Latinos um, don't have immigration, right? Puerto Ricans right. don't have immigration issues. Right have political asylum. So th those are two of the biggest groups of Latinos in the United States of America, right? right. That, that don't, immigration is not their issue. Right. And so they don't care about immigration. But until Puerto Ricans and Cubans care about immigration and, mm -hmm. and you know, and, uh, and Mexicans care about Puerto Rico and what's happening in Puerto Rico, we mm -hmm. won't have solidarity and then we won't have progress. Well. Wow. Well, hopefully, you know, one day that'll happen, man. You know, that solidarity thing. So as far as the Goya beans now, uh, boycott or not boycott, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, okay? I have a can of Goya black beans, right? It's in my closet already. I should have took it with me. But it's been there since 1997. <laughs> it's the last thing my grandmother ever bought was that can, my abuelita was the can of black beans. What do I do with the can? What do I do? I throw it away. I disappoint my grandmother. No, that kind of beans is like this picture it reminds me of my grandmother. You hold on to the beans. But if you're going to I I'm a big, uh, you know, proponent of, you know, solution, because we, we sit there and say, don't we're not doing this. We're not doing that. There are a lot of you can buy gandules. You can buy beans from the but not, but not, Goya. not Goya. You can buy them from Puerto Rico and they'll send them to you. You know, you can support businesses of people who look like you, and that's how we thrive as a people. There are other companies that have bandules and they have black beans and they have, and that they're Latin owned. And we have to start supporting our own. We support Goya because we have, it has brand recognition. Right, right. For a long, for a long time, they have brand recognition on that one. The owner of Goya is Español. He's a white European man who speaks mm -hmm. Spanish. And when he went there to the White House, he went there with, in the, in, in the name of corporate interest. He didn't go there to think about what the realities of Latinos in America are right now. Not right. A and what do you say for those people who would say, but Goya has done so much for Latinos, like in Puerto Rico, Hurricane Maria, they dropped a million pounds of beans and the coronavirus in the Bronx, a hundred thousand pounds of food, I should say, all kinds of products. And like, how are you gonna turn your back on that? How are you gonna turn your back on a company that directed its tax exemptions for the year towards you, the, their write-offs. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, they're, they're gonna, they write that off. You know how many Latinos have poured into that corporation? We don't, right. have, we don't have a concept of money. When we think about billions of dollars, we don't realize how much money. Latinos are a trillion dollar market, right? Trillion dollar market. How do we, we have made so many businesses successful, mm -hmm. yet and still, Go look at the working conditions in the factories of the people that work at Goya. I guarantee you it's not filled with Espanoles that talk like this. I promise you that's not what it is, right? <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe the secretary, you know, she's the one who watches the other, you know, Puerto the Ricans. Secretary, maybe, but when you go look at the factories and you look at the treatment of the people specifically during the pandemic, just because you go drop off, drop off some beans and go in, in the Bronx. How about you drop off some jobs in the Bronx? And look, <laughs> right? if you believe in the fact, said, right? right. Open up a Goya factory in the South Bronx, right? 
Of course, feed a, you you give a person a fish for one uh, fish, you they you feed them for one day. You teach them how to fish, you feed them for a lifetime. So you know when when you hear this that they dropped off, we're so we are so meek and so bobo, como decía mi abuela, somos uno bobo, right? That we think that when somebody does something, we're like, oh my god, they gave us something. What do, you know how many dollars? Puerto Ricans, Dominicans, and Cubans have poured into that Goya company. Mm -hmm. And you're going to go sit with Donald Trump after he threw paper towels at Puerto Ricans, after Jeff Sessions sat on the Congress floor and said that Dominicans do not have any working, uh, any working skills, any good skills that they shouldn't be in America because they don't have any skills. Mm -hmm. And the way that Cubans who don't realize that every day they're trying to dismantle their asylum from Cuba and make them immigrants too. It's just amazing to me to hear, you know, like uh, Stephen Miller's wife, Katie Miller, she did an interview two weeks ago and she said that why can't Latinos assimilate? She said, I don't even know why there's a need for Little Havana. And you know what, Little Havana is the staple of Miami. It is the, the heart and soul of the Cubans in Miami. And okay. people want to do away with it. And those are the people that a lot of those Cubans are supporting that they don't even know are trying to take away their asylum. Wow, 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 wow. Um, yeah, that's crazy. All right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wrap it up with this one. So yes. here's the situation. You ready, Aida? I'm ready. Aida. Aida. I'm sorry, Aida. Aida. It was Aida. Aida. So, Aida. Although, although I remember you saying in an interview, Aida, because you don't want to, you know. It got it got to the point where my you grandmother. Want to take one people. I don't want to interrupt them, so they call me Aida. But yeah, but Aida. my grandmother was like, "Ese nombre es mío." Okay. Yo te lo presté. <laughs> okay, well, I'm, I'm going to be like your grandmother right now. Aida. Aida. <laughs> Here's the situation. You, on Truth Serum, controversial, always saying things, and all of a sudden you say something that cancel culture is not happy about. So all of a sudden, here they come around the corner. They're chasing for you. Aida, they're coming to get you. They want you. Right? What do you do? What do you do with the cancel... <laughs> I do this. You know why? Because I, I feel like the people you should be canceling are the ones that are making sure you don't get loans so that you can uh, live, that don't want you to have good books at your schools. The people who are, uh, are screaming blue lives matter over your lives matter. Those are the people you need to be canceling. I'm a human being and I make mistakes. I'm a comedian and I have to say things that make people uncomfortable. That's how I push the envelope forward. I don't ever intentionally set out to hurt people or to say things that make people feel bad, but sometimes I'm not gonna get it right all the time and I'm not gonna sit around and let myself get bullied by a bunch of people who don't have a, a, a public platform who have the ability to say whatever they wanna say from the comfort of their homes without any consequences. So yes, I'm not letting them do that to me. You can't cancel me because I never came to the party. Well, I'm gonna tell you right now, that was some truth for you <laughs> right there, man. You, I, this is so fun. I mean, this this is good because you talk about things that make people uncomfortable, kind of think you basically trigger emotions too, and piss people off, and that's uh, that's good. So that th is that how you uh, uh, wound up with the Young Turks? Because I know you're a commentator, right, on the Young Turks. Which is good to see a Latina, you know, anywhere, but especially having a voice, you know what I'm saying? A Latina's point of view versus what yes. is our voice. You're doing that. So how did that come about? So I did a, um, I, I did the multicultural correspondence dinner in Washington, D.C. I performed that. Um, I did a, com a comedy set and it was received well. There were Republicans and Democrats a lot uh, along in the room and they all gave me a standing ovation. And the Young Turks were there and um, they asked me to come and do an interview. And then they invited me to come and do a panel and I've been doing it ever since. So it's been five years now that I've been with TYT. Wow, that's beautiful, that's beautiful. And then uh, Entre Nos on HBO Latino, how did that come about? Um, you know, I, 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 Edwin Lacona, who was the guy who- Oh, my goodness, I know Edwin. Edwin wanted me on the show and they and they brought me on when they thought I, that they were ready for me. I think I was on the third episode. Shayla Rivera did the first one, which I love Shayla. She's my, she's my girl and I've always looked up to her and I just think she's 
awesome, beautiful, intelligent, and everything that's good. Mm -hmm. And so they uh, they invited me to come to the show, and mm -hmm. I've been working with them ever since. And then Tiffany Haddish, right? Mm -hmm. They ready. Tell yeah. us quickly the story. You guys kind of came up together, right? You and Tiffany? Well, I came up with her because she'd been doing stand up longer than me. She's been doing it like twice as long as me because she started doing it when she was a teenager. Right. But uh, yeah, she's one of the first people I met. We became friends and we stayed friends and we've been friends ever since. And um, she's one of the people that I call to encourage. I talked to her yesterday. She called me. We encourage each other. We've always been friends. She embraced me from the beginning and every, you know, she would always help me get jobs. And if there was right. like, she couldn't do she would call me and say hey can you do this because i got this like, like comedy she, gigs that comedy gigs yeah, yeah. she looks out for me yeah wow that's sweet and then she threw you that rope yeah and then two days after i taped that special i sold my tv show and so a few months later after i sold the show i went and got her and i threw the rope back to her and i put her on as a producer on my show okay so yeah, quickly. So that's what I want to go over. So you, you have a show you saw. What is that about that show with Tiff? I think she's uh, the uh, executive producer, right? Yeah, I brought her on as an AP with me. Um, she has a bigger name and she can fight for me in places that I can't. So no doubt, no doubt. Of course. both of us. Because Doors now, open. Doors open. They hear <laughs> Tiffany Haddish is waiting. Now she's the executive producer of a TV show too, and a scripted TV show. And you sold um, it? Yeah, you I sold B.O. Max. Really? Well, I sold it first, and then I brought her on. Um, oh, what's I it about? What's it about? Can you tell us? It's based on my comedy and my life, and you know, my family's in it. My grandmother, the one with the really? gun, my mom. Yeah. Oh man, I can't wait to see that. Puerto Ricans. We'll see if it gets picked up. But it's I'm really? writing, it and it's about uh, our people, and you know, you well, hear. I'll use, I'll use my platform to spread the word, man. No doubt for you, man. Yeah, you hear the bendición, que Dios te bendiga. Like, I, uh, we're going to have la chancleta. <laughs> la chancleta. We're going to eat some pana, alcapurrias. I wanted to, you know, I wanted to uphold our people. Our people are beautiful and we're varied, especially in this moment after that hurricane and all of the things that have happened on the home, on our, on la isla. I just think it's important to tell our stories in a way that have dignity and substance. We're not all stereotypes and uh, we're beautiful people and we have we have a story to tell and that's what I want to do. That's beautiful, that's beautiful. Well, listen, man, I want to thank you for coming on with me here on Totally Uncensored mm -hmm. and speaking the truth like you always do and getting thank to know you, you better. Uh, you're an inspiration. Huh? Thank you, I said, you're my hero. I, I respect you so much. Oh, no, no, thank you, man. No. Thank it's you. And uh, what did I want to say? So tell people, where they can find you. So uh, if you want to fight with me on Twitter, it's at Funny Aida, <laughs> A-I-D-A. That's my uh, my handle on Instagram as well. And then on Facebook, it's at Funny, uh, it's Aida Rodriguez, Aida, A-I-D-A dot Rodriguez. Mm -hmm. And on YouTube, it's just my name, Aida Rodriguez. So check me out tomorrow on uh, Wednesdays. I do, I work out my jokes because I'm getting ready for my hour special. So I work mm -hmm. out my jokes online on the same this same platform. And then Friday's Truth Serum is at 12 p.m. Pacific time. And uh, we have, you know, shows with, I bring on Latinos and Black people and Asian people and gay people and marginalized people. So to talk about issues, uh, political and social issues, whereas you don't see them in the mainstream, right? Mm -hmm. So we have, uh, we have conversations, comedians, you got to come do it. And, um, you know, so that's yeah. where I am. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. So thanks again. I am Mike Robles. You can find me at I Mike right there. It says it at Mike Robles Buzz. And again, Aida, Aida I'm sorry, Aida. Thank you very much. Uh, and, uh, keep doing what you're doing, man. Latinos, they're very proud of you. Believe me, you know when I tell you that. And I won't stop. Thank you. All right. Good night, everybody. <laughs>